Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Today, I'm here with my new friend, Holly Tillman, mother of one five-month-old and agency owner, Holly and & Co. And you have a really interesting story on how you came to do what you do. You had a lot of twists and turns on the way to owning your agency. So will you start yeah. out by talking a little bit about your background? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, like <laughs> nice I said, laugh. a lot of twists and turns. <laughs> like my background, oh my gosh, there's so much to say. Um, I came from uh, the healthcare field. So I used to work in the emergency room for a long time. I was an EMT for 10 years uh, and I did all that stuff. And when I was working in the emergency room, I was like, I'm going to go get my master's degree. So I went, applied, got into a master's program that was online based. And uh, from there, I was like, you know what? I don't want to work in the ER when I'm doing this. I want to fly. So I applied to be a flight attendant, got the job and flew for my whole, through my throughout my master's degree. So once I did that, I was like, you know what? I think I'm done flying now. <laughs> and um, I was dating a guy at the time, and we had moved to San Diego, and uh, he was an Olympic athlete. So he was training down there, and I couldn't find a job anywhere. With my master's degree, I was so proud of that thing, and then couldn't find a job. I was overqualified or underqualified, all the things. So uh, I was like, you know what? I can start my own business. And I did. And the rest is history. How many years ago was that? That was five and a half years ago. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was really interesting when you and I were talking because I've said this to a few women that I've interviewed. I think a lot of women are fearful to make changes. And a lot of women that I get the opportunity to interview, I think part of the, I don't know if it's part of the skill set, but that gets you to six figures and higher is almost like this boldness in taking risks. And I feel like that's kind of what you do when you decide, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna try this now, or I'm gonna try this now, right? And so different, the different things that you've done. Yep. And your agency is wildly successful. And you, we were we, when we were talking yesterday and you're like, oh yeah, I manage groups with hundreds of thousands. I'm like, my mind just went, okay, that's really insane to me. <laughs> Just even the the thought of having to manage that kind of made me a little bit like anxious <laughs> for you. Yeah. Um, but you're so good at it and you love it and you do it with a five month old. So talk yeah. a little bit about that because we have a lot of listeners that are trying to navigate motherhood and yeah. a career or a business or and I think it's always interesting to hear how different people manage that. Yeah, it's been hard. Uh, I won't I won't lie in saying like, oh, yes, it's the easiest thing. It's not. Before I had Beckett, my baby, I, I like hustled. I hustled all the time and I would work all the time. I loved it. I loved the hustle. And I had Beckett and my world got flipped upside down. Mm -hmm. And now I, we were talking yesterday. I'm, I'm like, you know what? I just want to spend time with my son. Mm -hmm. So being able to set the boundaries and um, really just be like, you know, I'm going to work these days and I'm not going to work these days and I'm going to do this and not that. And I want to work with these clients and not those clients. Setting the boundaries has been the game changer for me. Mm -hmm. And how do you see that moving forward? So he's five months, obviously you've got a, you have a business to run and you have a baby that's growing and changing. How do you think you'll manage that as you move forward? Do you think you'll stay in this? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I will a little bit. I want to get more into the info product space. Like I have a ton of knowledge and I want to share that with people mm -hmm. um, and teach people how to get to where I've, you know, gotten myself. Mm -hmm. So I want to do that some. And um, my whole thing is though, I want my, my business to grow around my family, yeah. not my family to grow around my business. Yeah. So I do this because 
I want to be home with my baby. I want to be able to travel when I want to. I want to be able to do whatever the heck I want to do. And they're like that. That's my priority. Yeah. It's really cool to be able to say that, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you spent some time in the medical arena. Talk a little bit about that. Why, why, why did you choose to go into it? And then why did you choose to leave? That's a good question. Um, I started, I took my EMT classes and all this stuff when I was in college. I went to University of Idaho up north and it was a volunteer agency and it was the time of my life. It was so much fun. Uh, and then I came back down and I was like, you know what? I want to be a physician's assistant. So I got a job in the ER. I was on the track to go back to school and do all the things. Uh, and, and it was fun. I got to see some really cool things, but it just, it just wasn't for me. I, I don't, I don't even know what it was. One day it just clicked and I was like, you know what? This isn't for me anymore. And I love helping people. And that's what I do in my business now, just in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, that at such a young age, you would go with your kind of gut like that, especially after the schooling that, that is required. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Cause I think most of the time we question ourselves, especially if we've invested quite a bit of time and effort into something like, oh, am I really, do I really feel that way? Or is this really the best decision for me to be making right now? Maybe I should give it longer. So it's interesting that you trusted yourself from such a young age. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where that came from, to be honest with you, but it's something I've always done. I've always, I, I it was instilled from my parents, I suppose, mm -hmm. where, um, I just, if I feel something, I really lean into that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what it is. That's where I'm going. And it's funny because my, my family now is like, you know, maybe that's not a good idea, Holly. And I'm like, I'm on this path. Like I'm going down this road. This is where we're going. <laughs> I listen, of course. And I take their, like, I take, take it into consideration what they're saying, but I'm, I'm very stubborn. We'll say determined. I'm, I'm on a road. You know, one of the things that I think it would be fun to have on this podcast is tell us what you do for your fun outside activity. Oh, this is something no one will guess. No one will guess this about me. <laughs> I <laughs> I drag race, actually. Yes. I have a drag truck that is it's like blown motor. It's a uh, 700 horsepower runs down the track. It's it's really fast. Um I'm, we come from a racing family, car racing. My brother races sprint cars. Um, my boyfriend is crazy good mechanic and setup guy, and that's what we do. We love I cars. I can't imagine <laughs> this tiny little cute blonde walking onto a drag race. <laughs> People are probably like, and then you get in. And race. Yeah, it would be that. Would be it. I would love to see that. On you camera. gotta come. Yeah, you have to come. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, it's 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 wild. It's so much fun. And I actually did that in high school. So I drag raced in high school. I lettered in drag racing. I've always kind of been a motorhead. But when you look at me, people are like, you what? Right. <laughs> like, you what? <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Yeah, it just doesn't quite fit. No. That's what I love, <laughs> Right. Though. I was going to say, love I to be you unique. Love that. <laughs> yep. I'm guessing that some of the things that you've done in life in that regard probably have played into the way that you trust yourself in business, too, though. Probably. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that, but probably. Mm -hmm. So you brought this up, earning what you earn. So tell me when you achieved six figures, what did that feel like for you? Especially with the transitions that you had made, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember, was there a certain emotion around it? Yeah. So when we had moved to San Diego, it's, I like think back and it kind of makes me emotional. We had moved to San Diego. It turns out Olympic athletes don't make a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're endorsed and sponsored and all this. So my boyfriend at the time, we were living on a thousand dollars a month in San Diego, California. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, we have to do something different. Yeah. We have to do something different. And it was hard. And we were we felt so poor and we were eating fried rice and we were doing that. Like it's not a typical rags to riches story. But when I started my business, I was like, I know I can be successful at this. Mm -hmm. And I did. And within a year and a half. I was at six figures in my business. And I remember thinking, I remember being in the car, I know exactly where I was. And I calculated and I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. Like I was so excited, almost to the point of like, 
what the heck's next? <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, I made this goal now. What do I do? <laughs> so that was really cool. That's very cool. And especially having gone through the transitions that you did in order to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you say making a thousand dollars a month and eating fried rice. I remember um, when I was, you know, working my way up, and I remember eating top ramen a lot. <laughs> like, yep. Good thing I enjoyed top ramen, <laughs> right? I hate fried, like homemade fried rice. Now won't eat it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, book or podcast? Do you favor one way or the other? I like podcasts because. I am busy. I'm really busy. And so to be able to listen in the car is key, yeah. especially when Beckett's asleep in the car with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one I've recently been into is Brene Brown's. She has two, and I can't remember the one that I like the most. The most. I think it's called Unlocking, Unlocked, something like that. It's Brene Brown, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's great. Her books are great, too. Yeah. I, I kind of bounce back and forth. Mm -hmm. So if you were speaking to, we have a lot of followers that are aspiring to six figures. And then we have those that are, would be your and my kind of counterparts. Mm -hmm. um, but the ones that are aspiring to six figures, I always love hearing wisdom that will help them to continue on in their journey and maybe push a little bit more than, I think probably one of the biggest things that I see with women is they give up on themselves too easily. Mm -hmm. So how would you speak to that person, that younger woman that's aspiring to be where you are? What lessons have you learned that you think you could pass on? So many lessons. <laughs> I think the biggest one, though, is don't let a no stop you. Don't let somebody saying no make you shut down. Mm -hmm. Because just because they're saying no doesn't mean that it's rejection. It means that that's not for you right now. Mm -hmm. So I think perseverance is huge and key and just keep going no matter what. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to a girlfriend of mine about perseverance actually yesterday. Um, it's interesting. Your, your son, Beckett is too young. <laughs> I'm sure he's persevering a lot in things when he wants them. But when you have kids that are my age, teaching them that skill, it's not always that easy mm -hmm. to, because they do get, especially because they have girls and they'll get emotional sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you want to just infuse it in them and, not always as easy to do as you would like right yeah but, it hasn't been easy for me I mean I like there's been a lot of times where somebody slams the door in my face and I'm like okay maybe I like is this a sign do I just give up now yeah but I think the big like that's been the biggest thing for me and my success has been just pushing through and knowing I got this like I can do this mm -hmm. I would agree with you on that I I look back at things that <clears throat> didn't go the way that I wanted them to. And um, sometimes those have been the biggest lessons for me. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, like, you can make a plan for your life, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Chances are it's really not going to happen. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the questions that I just recently added is, Tell us what your wisdom is from motherhood. Like, what is your what is your mom tip? All five months of it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Perseverance. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> sleep when you can. <laughs> sleep when you can. Actually, my baby sleeps so good. I'm I'm like super Nobody blessed. wants to hear you right now. I know. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know. Super blessed. But um, I think that one thing, <sighs> don't be afraid to step away for yourself. Sometimes... It's okay to, you know, step away and take a moment and regroup and come back to it, to your baby, to your kids, to whatever it is. Self-care is key. Yeah. The whole breathe in your mask. What is it? Give yourself your yeah. mask first. Yeah. Put your, just put your own put your oxygen mask. Yeah. First. <laughs> yeah. I learned that in flight attendant school. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what have I not asked? What have I not asked that you think, oh, this would be a really great nugget for the podcast listeners to hear? I think no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your skill set is, there's always a business for you. You can start something. You can you can do it. Just have the confidence in yourself. And if, if you can't see inside yourself, find someone who can and um, just do it. That's such great wisdom. 
um, someone else that uh, I interviewed said, sometimes you have to look around at the people around you and decide if those are the people that you want around you. And if mm-hmm. they're not building you up, that finding someone that really believes in you or the people that really believe in you. It's such yeah. a huge one. That is big. They, they, there's that saying, like, you are the equivalent of the five people you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. And I am intentional about that every single day. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they speak to you <laughs> over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. When someone says something, right, you hear it over and over. Yeah. yeah. And you want people to uplift you. You don't want somebody that's going to be negative and bring you down. And, mm-hmm. like, it's okay to keep those people in your life if, you know, their family and all those things. <laughs> but <laughs> if but their family? be intentional. <laughs> be intentional about who you're listening to, really listening to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I totally agree with you on that. Thank you for doing this with me. It's Thank you for take, having me. It's taken a while to get you scheduled. I know. That <laughs> I baby. Feel, you know what? I feel like that. With it, it's been, as I start to um, have women that I really want on the podcast, it's like you realize how busy our lives really are. And trying to get a schedule to overlap with someone is it's hard. crazy sometimes. It's so crazy. Yeah. I have clients and they're like, yeah, can you meet on this day? And these boundaries, right? I'm like, no, I meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they're like, well, I'm not available for three weeks. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so yeah. <it> is. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah, it was really great. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.